So we are having the enshrinement upon us. I mean, it's just around the corner. It is. So let's talk a little bit about what folks will see when they get here come the first week of August. <laughs> you know, I'm so excited to share and tell you what they're going to see is progress, uh, first and foremost. They're going to see a village coming to life. Uh, they're going to see uh, different buildings that we've been talking about for the past year or two um, actually out of the ground. They're going to see new roads. They're going to see landscape. They're going to see beautiful assets that our company has worked tirelessly to uh, execute and, and actually complete. So uh, I can go through the components with you, um, and I can do that very briefly and then expand upon anything yeah. um, that you like. So really, as you come in off of Fulton Drive now, you'll have a brand new entranceway to what we're calling the village, which is just over 100 acres, about 110 acres of development here. Um, obviously, a new thoroughfare into the Pro Football Hall of Fame, which is the gem of why we're creating all of this, right? The excellence that is the Pro Football Hall of Fame. And we'll lead into uh, the first uh, set of opportunities, which we're calling uh, Play Action Plaza. So our three and a half acres of outdoor fun space, Ferris wheel, zip line, outdoor amphitheater, water feature, actually the largest man-made water feature in the state of Ohio, uh, we're told, which is spectacular. Our wonderful partners at Envirescapes are out there now, hundreds of them working tirelessly to make, make it look like it's always been there. Uh, and then if, as you come up through the project, you'll see what we're calling our fan engagement zone. Everything's football themed, fam, right? So I love that. Uh, all of our retail <laughs> and restaurant opportunities, think very unique concepts that you can't find anywhere else. Very important to us as it relates to this project is that we're not competitive with our partner restaurants and our families and friends that own and operate businesses, but we have unique experiences here that folks can really be engaged with uh, and come uh, from afar experience something different, but come from around the streets that you see, you know, just beyond us on the regular to dine, Don Shula's, Brew Kettle. Um, you're going to have a Schmush Cookies. Isaac Bruce, who's a Pro Football Hall of Famer, has a unique ice cream concept that we'll have only here, which is really cool, and a whole host of other things. So that's in the uh, fan engagement zone. And then as you come up through the project, you'll see, and I'm sure many folks listening today or viewing this will notice what is right behind us, which is uh, mm -hmm. the Center for Performance. Yes, it's 100,000 square feet underneath a bubble, a dome. Um, just spectacular. It's eight, over eight stories high. It's actually as high as our stadium, which is, uh, it, it's almost unthinkable, right? Yeah. Um, but truly was reimagined uh, and re-engineered to value engineer the space. So originally uh, conceptualized as a brick and mortar building, very costly, over $30 million. Um, and once we started thinking about ways in which we could actually continue to build what we're building, but do it in a more economical way. What better than a dome? Uh, not only did it save us over half of that expenditure, it also allowed us to repurpose the steel that was bought and actually delivered, uh, given COVID, which was spectacularly, into other buildings. Um, so we were able to lift up the dome in short order, actually will be used for enshrinement. All of the enshrinement parties that the Pro Football Hall of Fame is Hosting will be in that space, so we're super excited about that. So indoor flat floor space that will actually facilitate and allow for indoor tournaments for all sports that play indoors, volleyball, wrestling, cheer camps, dance competitions, um, you name it, very large-scale events. Think home and auto shows, garden shows. Uh, there will be an indoor football field. It's obviously inside. Uh, there will be opportunities for concerts and, and other types of opportunities inside of that facility, too. So really allows us to... Uh, flatten out the seasonality of sports during the fantastic winter months <laughs> of Ohio, yeah, no, right? Yeah. Right. So as you go uh, up a little bit further uh, beyond what's behind us here, you have our uh, Forever Lawn Sports Complex. So, so incredibly grateful to Forever Lawn. Um, their work is spectacular. Eight turf fields up there. Don Scott Field is still obviously a part of the facility, but now has outbuildings to truly create experience for those coming for tournaments for multiple days to have a more enjoyable experience. So that would include outbuildings of tickets, concessions, merchandise, medical facilities, classroom facilities. So really a much more um, encompassing experience for our guests and visitors that come from, quite frankly, around the country to play in tournaments almost 10 months a year. So we know from an economic development perspective, those youth fields are a driver like nothing else. We have soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, Anything that can play on a rectangular sport, obviously football, but you'd be not probably surprised to hear that soccer is, is obviously something oh, that we host. Uh, big dog lacrosse, a whole lot of other sports come to be with us for multiple days. They come, they eat in our restaurants, they stay in our hotels, 
uh, they buy our gas. They, it, it really is from a tourism perspective and an opportunity for our community to grow, um, a wild opportunity um, to continue to give back. So we're excited about the youth fields. Those will be done um, by enshrinement also for our folks to, to see and enjoy. And what's so fun is as I see these hundred acres come to life every day, I mean, hundreds of people out here working, I recognize very specifically and would love to share with everyone listening just how important this project is locally. Almost everyone you see here is a local company. Hillshire Clark, Beaver Excavating, Enviroscapes. I mean, the list, the DePetro Excavating, I could go on and on. The list is incredibly long. We are 90% local. We're so proud of the fact that we're giving back in those dramatic ways. Businesses are benefiting because of what we're building here, and they, that will continue to happen as we go into phase three and beyond. You know, you don't build a church for Easter Sunday. So this is phase two of what we consider will be many phases of a development and a project that I truly believe will be a game changer for our area, yeah. for Canton proper and for Stark County and beyond. Um, and, and talks that we've had before, and folks know you're you're a local girl right. and went to Mountain Union. And, right. And so this is, you know, you're seeing this from the local perspective as well. Sure. Um, what, what do you see as the um, usage percentage? I mean, mm -hmm. is it going to be more of the tourists, the out-of-town folks, mm -hmm. or are the local folks going to be able to mm -hmm. you know, say, hey, I want to go over to the village? I'm so glad you asked that question because I see it as both, and it absolutely is being built for both. We want to make sure that what we have is viable for our folks to come weekend, weekend out. I mean, it, it really will be those opportunities for our local folks to be here, our regional community. But then what we're also building is a, is a reason for folks to come back and see the hall for different reasons every single time you come. So what might have been a bucket list item uh, once in your lifetime now can become an experience that's going to be different every single time you come because of all of the different things that we have to offer. So definitely want to create a tourism destination and really amplify what has been the Pro Football Hall of Fame's enticement for decades, right? right? But really give folks that are coming now reason to stay, play, dine longer, right? Mm -hmm. So what you might have come for three, four hours prior and then made your way up 77, right? You now actually have a reason to maybe go to one of the restaurants on site. You might be here for a tournament and you'll stay and eat in the restaurants and then go to the hall. Um, what I failed to mention is part of phase two, which is actually coming out of the ground. You won't visibly see this. We're doing all the infrastructure work, all that non-sexy stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That costs millions and millions of dollars. Um, is our on-site hotel, the second of our hotels. We actually own the Double Tree, uh, and you well know as part of phase two was the first asset we completed. Over $30 million we took from the Kinley Grand, bought it, took it down to the studs. It's a showpiece. It's, it's spectacular. Mm -hmm. I'm so proud to say it is now once again the Hall of Famer Hotel for enshrinement this year. Um, but really, uh, that hotel and then the on-site indoor water park gives folks that it extends their stay time. So super excited and proud of the opportunity that it presents, our project presents, not just for outsiders coming in, but quite frankly, for all of the community to really be here and enjoy it as well. And, and we talked about the dome and you did a great job of explaining because people are asking that question constantly. <laughs> What's in the dome? What's right. for? Right. You know, how are they going to use it? Sure. My question is, when does the Ferris wheel arrive? <laughs> you know, well, we announced, obviously, we're so incredibly uh, grateful. We were able to, we're going to repurpose what was in the IX Center, um, sharing, resharing that information, but also want to make sure that we're sharing that safety is our number one uh, priority as it relates to absolutely everything that we're doing here. Uh, and so as we took down the Ferris wheel, it became very clear that certain pieces and parts of that would need to be refabricated. You can't reuse them, you know, mm. certainly not that we need to rebuild the wheel. <laughs> Pardon, but what we do need to do are rebuild those some certain pieces and parts that need to be reconstructed for safety purposes. Yeah. So I can't give you a definitive date, but some we're hopeful, you know, later this fall, if not, it'll be in the spring. It will be here uh, in all of its glory. It's, you know, we're really excited about that. These are really two of the only rides in Stark County, per se. Uh, and another reason why we feel this for both locals and Tourists alike, it's going to be a really unique destination. Um, and, you know, it, the Center for Performance, I failed to mention, it will actually have concessions and locker rooms and all of the amenities that you would think a sports facility should have as well. So restrooms, all of those types of things. But. And, and I, you know, we know we've talked about this before, and I've talked about it with Michael Crawford and, you know, the bumps and the bruises and the, all of the things along the way. And every time, you know, we talk about something, then out come the naysayers mm -hmm. and, oh, well, whatever. 
Do you think there will ever be a time when that's not going to happen? <laughs> Boy, I can dream, Pam. Um, you know, probably not. You know, I think that uh, I'm, as unfortunate as it is, there's always going to be some folks fighting against you that just can't see what you see or believe in what you believe in. And seeing is believing. You know, mm -hmm. I can understand, and we've long said this, appreciate why folks were skeptical um, given the history of how this has, you know, been. Um, what I will assure you of is what we work towards every day. And Mike Crawford says this, I say this multiple times a day. What we say we're going to do, we do. Mm -hmm. And when we are talking about it, we actually know that we're able to do it. So, you know, those things matter to me. People's trust in us matters to me quite a lot, right? I'm from here. These are my friends and families. And um, it's really important uh, that we commit and we, uh, these are our livelihoods. This is our, this is where we live. So it's very important. Um, I, I'd like to think that we could get to a place where folks would be by and large, very supportive, but you know, we, we feel like, you know, some days we're just fighting an uphill battle. That's, you know, is it ever going to get easier? You know, we sit and we're like, you know, will this ever change? And, you know, it's hard to change the trajectory. I mean, you know, the strengthening start report, I'm involved quite a bit in economic mm -hmm. development in our area. It's very hard to get folks to see things that they have never seen before uh, and get them to believe in things that they've never had the opportunity to experience before. So, for me, it's really about continuing to have a great conversation, some of them very difficult. You know, it really is going to take a village to build this village. Uh, we are literally trying to lift up a destination project in probably what is, quite frankly, one of the hardest financial times in our recent history, right, of a, right. as a country. So we need the help and support of our local governments. We need the city. We need the county. We need the port authorities. We need, quite frankly, everyone to come together right. and really help us try to figure out how we can get there because it's that important. I mean, if, if you looked at economically where we are, the numbers don't lie. Older, poorer, smaller, right? That's, we've all heard that. Right. What we also are talking about though, which is why I'm so proud of our community, is how we become bigger, more prosperous, younger, right? And this project is a way in which we can do that. Mm -hmm. And what's so exciting for me to share is it's not just this project. There are so many other things that are happening, not just because of this. I can't, I would never take full credit. I'm not that naive, but because of visionaries, because of other folks' belief in what we're doing, other companies are looking to come here. Folks are looking to move here. I'm really hopeful for the future. I, I get incredibly encouraged that my daughters might have great cause to stay here and build their families and their lives and have prosperous, you know, futures because right. of this project, Amazon, things that are happening in North Canton and Maslin and Alliance and people are Dreaming together, and mm -hmm. you know, I really am encouraged. Yeah, it's a chain reaction, mm -hmm. and that's exactly how it'll happen. We appreciate you letting us come out and take a look Absolutely. around. We're gonna get some video and put that also on our website and Great. our YouTube channel and all wonderful. of our social media. So that's wonderful. Um, appreciate you having us out. You you said it. In just a few weeks, this will be open to our community, uh, and I welcome folks to come and just walk around, check it out. We're gonna have open houses in different buildings. We'll make sure that's very publicly shared via yes. your channels as well. Yes. And uh, we're really proud uh, and we really hope our community is just as proud of, of what we're doing.